In this video, I'm going to show how to easily configure our project to be built and run tests on different environments, test and dev, by using some tools at our disposal. First of all, this is a Spring Boot project, so I'm going to use the at profile annotation. Secondly, I'm going to show how to create an environment on my local machine and also on a Circle CI, CI CD environment using environment variables. Here's the scenario. I have a Spring Boot project that I have hosted in GitHub, and I've attached it to CircleCI for CI-CD pipelines. And you see that for the first few commits, the tests have succeeded no problem, but recently I've had some failing tests. So I think about what changed recently, and I remember that I am using Spring JPA to connect to a database that I've created on my virtual machine or on my development environment. It's just a normal MySQL database, but it lives here on my development environment. Let's remember the way that CircleCI works, as well as many CI-CD tools like this. It'll go through a series of steps, and one of those steps is doing a build on essentially a Docker image, which is just imagine kind of like a, a small virtual machine that has just enough to build our app and then run the tests on it. Now the trick is, I said small, right? Small Docker image. Well, that Docker image doesn't have our database, does it? So I need to find a different approach to get those tests to still pass. Let's see what we have at our disposal to make this happen. So take a look. The DAO that I created that connects to the database is the Specimen SQL DAO, and it implements an interface called iSpecimenDAO. If we look at our service, we see that our service is simply doing an auto-wire to iSpecimenDAO. In other words, it's attaching to that interface layer is the variable type. Now, what can we put in that variable? We can put in that variable any object of any class that implements that interface. And that's the value of an interface, is the ability to just set a list of methods and then have that variable filled in with any object that implements those methods. And this is a perfect case. Note that our stub class has the exact same methods as the actual SQL class. And that's what we would expect because they both implement the same interface. But the stub class is simply storing everything into an internal map in internal memory instead of using a database. This is going to be much more lightweight for any containerized approach, Docker, Kubernetes, anything else we wish to use. And our tests are still going to be effective because we're not interested in testing that the database works. We trust that. We're simply testing the code that we're using to talk to the database. And this stub is essentially mocking out or stubbing out the job that a database would do with those CRUD operations. Locally, I want to run my specimen SQL DAO. So I'm going to use a Spring Boot annotation called profile. And inside of that, I'm going to say dev in quotes. And that means it's going to run on the development profile. Now let's go to specimen DAO stub. And here I'm going to say at profile and we'll say test. So that means it will use this object in test. It will use this object in dev. In the vast majority of cases, that's all you need to do. I have a couple of housekeeping things I need to take care of, though. First of all, I qualified this repository. I don't want to have any confusion there. I'm going to leave it just as a plain repository tag. So now the repository tag is similar in both classes, and they're not preferring one over the other. If you're not aware of the repository tag, it's just like the at component annotation. It's just specifically tuned for something like a DAO. One more thing is I have the specimen repository, which extends CRUD repository. And this is a funny one because it's an interface, but nonetheless, CRUD repository is a special interface for Spring JPA, and it says, I want to access a database. I don't want it to get confused and try to connect to a database, but only when it's in the test environment. So this is kind of like an inverse annotation. I don't want this available in test. So for that, I say at profile, and then inside I simply say double quote, then exclamation test. And it says, okay, just ignore this when I'm on that test profile. But how does Circle CI know that it's test? Well, here's how. Let's go back to our project and hit project settings. Now, environment variables and add environment variable. We'll say spring underscore profiles underscore underscore active. And then we'll say test, just like so. Add environment variable. Now let's make that build happen simply by doing a commit and push. So right click. And we see in just a moment it kicks off our build. Let's go ahead and take a look. One interesting thing to watch for after it spins up the environment is it's going to 
tell us what environment it's using. And it's actually always done this. We just never looked at it. By default, it uses one called default. We're going to confirm that it uses one called test. Take a look to the right here, if I can grab it. The following profiles are active, and you see it asterisk it out. The reason why it asterisk it out is that CircleCI assumes that any environment variable could be a password or could be something that is secure that's not meant for public GitHub. And that's, by the way, a really good hint. If you want to keep any passwords out of GitHub, that's a good way to do it, is set up an environment variable. So you see what they do is they asterisk it out. Now, let's take a look. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our tests. And sure enough, the tests have passed. Now that we've set up that environment, there's another neat thing that we can do. This application properties file we know is where we put things like our database configuration, and it could very well be specific to an environment because you see here it's localhost. Maybe that's not the case when we run it in CICD. So we can actually make different versions of this application properties file. And the syntax is simply application dash and then the environment. So we could say dash test dot properties. And then those are the properties that will only be available and only be used on our test environment. As a matter of fact, what if we did want to change our environment locally? Because we know we did that environment variable up on our Circle CI build. So how do we do it here? There are several options. Right here in the application properties file, we can say spring dot profiles dot active equals. And then we can say dev, which might be our local environment. Now you see, this is simply a, a a property. We could also pass this in as a command line parameter when we start our application. We could set it up as an environment variable for our application locally. There's several different ways we can do it, but this is one good way you can flop between test and dev and so on and so forth. You can even set up profiles in the Maven POM XML. This is good for now. I just want to keep in mind that this is all dev specific stuff. So a good refactoring might be to rename this to application dev.properties make a new application.properties, and then simply pass in an environment variable or some other variable to trigger the profile type here on our local machine. But we got it working up on Circle CI. We got our test passing, and so I'm happy. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.